This is I'm Derek. Oh, what the? Sorry, I'm just starting in. So, this is Derek Daly. This is Derek Daly. I'm Derek Daly with Legacy Outdoor Adventures and Juniper Cane Recovery, and I'm here with Mike Petrie from Petrie Consulting, and we're going to talk about uh, our outcomes and the data we collect here at Legacy and Outdoor. I invited Mike to come and give us a run through around the data we collect, our outcomes, and the process that we we, we do through data collection. Thanks, Derek. So. Legacy Outdoor Adventures uses the OQ45.2, which is a well-respected mental health measure. It's normed, it's valid, it's used internationally. And they use it at admit and discharge to collect outcomes data. So when collecting outcomes, you have to, to establish a baseline, you have to measure at the end of treatment, and then you need to measure post-discharge to find out whether or not anybody got better. They also facilitate client progress monitoring, which is regular mid-treatment uh, sampling of clients to track their progress. And it's really the, the gold standard in treatment these days because to use a normed and valid measure on a regular basis and to share the results in session with the client is proven to impact outcomes in the sense that you get more robust gains in a shorter period of time. It's, it's it's uh, it's actually the OQ45 used in that way is on the NREPS registry of evidence-based interventions. So it's it's not just for research; it actually impacts the quality of treatment. So the OQ45.2 is is built with what's called a reliable change index, and the way that works is it's a statistical process for drowning out the noise of data. So you can get faults change that could be due to error of this kind or that. And so basically the layman's comprehension is that you just have to have clients changing a certain amount of points in order for it to be a meaningful change. Mm -hmm. And the way that they talk about it is that if, if somebody makes clinically significant improvement, then their improvement would be obvious to somebody who knows them well. So that reliable change index is a really important concept for explaining legacies, outcomes, and, uh, and, and the process during change. So this, is, uh, this would be our client intake, and so this is the clinical cutoff that Mike's talking about. So anything above this line is gonna be in high clinical distress. So what we see at Legacy with their clients coming in our, in our door is that they're coming in in high clinical distress. By week three, they drop down in a normal functioning range, um, if a client is in high clinical distress, I think like Mike was talking about, this would be someone that is, there's going to be visible dysfunction going on. So if they go into a therapist, uh, meaning if they're at school and they go into a counselor and they're in this sort of distress, it's, it's probably going to start showing up in their life. Yeah, I mean, basically anybody that's above the clinical cut line is responding in a way that's consistent with somebody who is e either receiving treatment services or probably should be receiving treatment services. And so when they built the instrument, like one of the ways that they figure out whether the instrument is measuring what they want it to is they, is they, they give it to a random, you know, they give it to a sample in the population and they get scores back and they should be able to predict without knowing where that person was, whether or not they were in treatment. So if you're up here, it's consistent with people in need of services. It's pretty, and, it, and it's, it's pretty wild that by week three, clients at Legacy are back below the clinical cutoff. There's still a lot of treatment that happens, as you can see, and this is not representative of every single week, but the, the import, some of the important parts are they're well below clinical cutoff, having experienced uh, clinically significant treatment gains during the course of treatment, and it, really importantly, they're maintaining those six months to a year later. And something that's been exciting for us to explore with Mike over the last year is looking specifically at our substance abuse data uh, with our substance abuse diagnosis at intake and post-discharge, and this is what we see. So, you know, we're talking about guys coming in with uh, an addiction and substance abuse at intake, and they're, they're graduating back in normal functioning range and maintaining that six months to a year later, which is really exciting. 